Okay. Hi everybody. <clears throat> My name is John Silver. I'm a professional artist. And today I'm going to be showing you how I would, uh, how I'm painting a horse, a white horse or grey horse, in a landscape, uh, in an old master's sort of style. So uh, I, I started this painting about a week ago. I've done, done the first sort of basics, the bit, the first half of it. So we'll get cracking onto the uh, onto the rest of it now. Well, hi Pat, nice to see you. Can you hear me okay? I'm trying to. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I've got a new microphone. Let me just uh, plug in. Right, okay, now we have the new microphone plugged in. I don't know if it's going to work. I hope you can all hear me. Right, so this is the basic painting that I have so far. And this is, I did this earlier. Oh, thank you, Pat. And uh, I did this about a week ago. It's, it's totally dry now. This is oil paint on canvas panel. And what I'm going to do is just sort of do a bit more to the, to the, to the tree and the horse and, and uh, bring it into more definition. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some liquid, um, liquid original. This is this stuff. That's this stuff, liquid original. And just put some on my brush and give it a, a quick going over. And what this is, I'm only putting a very, very thin layer of this on, as you can see. Now, otherwise, the, the oil paint underneath is totally dry. And this allows the paint that I'll be putting on to adhere to it a bit better. It's, it's, it creates a better tooth, a better ground for the paint to move around on. So now we've got that, we'll just get a little bit of tissue. And we'll wipe that off, move it around. I don't want a lot of this on, so. And that's just, it's taking a tiny, tiny bit of paint off, but it's okay. There we go. Right. Okay, now then, now we've got that, we can start to put in some, a bit of the paint. Now then, what we're going to do here is, uh, let's make the lights on the horse a bit lighter now. So we're using a little flat hog hairbrush, bristle brush, and to mix some of the, uh, you'll notice the paints I'm using here are uh, ultramarine, Burnt over, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and uh, I've got two whites. One's a mixing white, one's a, a lead white alternative. That tends to dry, the lead white alternative tends to dry a little bit too quickly. So I add a little bit of the alkyd mixing white in with it. Or I've got some alkyd and pastel medium here, I can also mix in with it. And that's pure white, we don't want pure white. So what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of the red and a little bit of the yeah that'll create a little orange effect it's still a little too light too, too orange so we'll just add a bit more in there now this is going to look quite garish I suppose but here we go This is basically where the light is hitting the horse. You can move this around with your fingers as well. Now I'm making this in a style of an old master, so really what I'm doing, what I should be doing in a minute, is doing most of the tone of the horse in harmony with the tone of the of the background. So we've got 
a lot of burnt umber here. In fact, this horse here has just been done with burnt umber and white. So now what I'll do is I'll just mix that same colour and just add a little bit of burnt umber to it. And tone that down just a little bit. This is a little bit more delicate and complicated than the previous paintings I've been showing you, which are very, very quick. This one is going to take a little bit more time. You know, I mean, I'm certainly not going to finish this today, but I'm just showing you how, how I would do this. Around this now because you've got the background that's a little bit wet you can move this about with your finger fingers are wonderful things for blending it's the best blending tool there is all right so you can see how that's beginning to add a bit more definition If anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them as I can while I'm painting. A lot of a lot of muscle structure in a horse. So you gotta be very careful. But getting this right, getting them in the right place. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Yes, get in the studio and get painting. <laughs> so this is the sort of second layer I'm doing on this. The first layer I did last week. Oops, a little bit of white paint on there, but that will wipe off. Must have some white on my hand. Yep, I have. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is the second layer, and I will probably be doing another layer next week. Just 
part of the horse here, up to these, I keep knocking off the camera. It's very difficult painting with the camera in front of me, in between me and the painting. <laughs> it's always like a little square bit there. I'm not that bothered about um, using a small brush to do little details and stuff. It's not necessary at this stage. Oh. Hello Kevin, nice to see you. Oh nice, <laughs> I can't see you, but uh, nice for you to join us. Now, as I stated earlier, I'm just um, doing the second stage of this. The first stage I did last week, so it's had a week to dry. And now I'm just popping in. A bit more definition into the horse with rather a large brush. I can go smaller later on, but for now, I'll just stick with the larger brush. I'm not after absolute perfect realism here, I'm just after a painterly approach to the whole. Pay particular attention to where the, the muscles are on the horse and the sinews. They're all very important. Finger just to blend. Mm, yes, it's, it's coming along now. We're getting somewhere. Now for this, for the head, this is, I might need a smaller brush. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just come down to quite a small what size. I'm still going to use bristle for the moment. Marina, <laughs> hi Marina. Um, how do I know when to stop? Ah, when it's finished. <laughs> uh, when you think it's finished, when each person has their own idea of when that painting is finished. Yeah, I could go on and on and on with, for this, but I could leave it and do little bits to it for years, perhaps. But time is short. Life is too short to mess around. You may as well get cracking on it and finish it off as best you can and get on with something else. So let's just get some of this lighter colour on here now. I have many paintings I want to do for myself and I have got a lot of commissions I have to do thankfully I'm, I'm getting commissions still but there are paintings that I want to do for myself this is one of them and I'll probably take a bit, bit of time over this
which is quite a light bit here. Let's see that from a little bit of very light white there. Just picking up the edge. Very highlighted there. Oh, hello Michelle, hello Alison. Thank you for joining us. Now this mane is, although it's on a white horse, it has a kind of a golden colour, so we'll use this golden mixture then. Just, and we'll just start to put in some of the mane, the fringe. It's going a little bit darker with this, this goldy colour, so we'll just add a touch of burnt umber to an orangey colour. Perhaps a little bit more yellow in there. So you could use yellow ochre do all these pieces uh, instead of what I use but um, I use the primary colors instead because with the primaries you can mix more or less every other color oh. okay. apparently my sound is quite muffled and quiet let me just remove this microphone see if that's any better <clears throat> you know tell me if you can hear me now <laughs> I hope you can still hear me someone can let me know what the sound is like is it okay I hope so So. That'll be the same with this tail. I'm not interested in doing every single strand of this tail. Okay, thank you, Pat. The sound's okay, that's all right. We're getting there. We are getting there. Right. That needs to be a little bit darker again, so let's add a little bit of liquid to this. Liquid, just to make it flow a bit easier. It's a little bit darker now. Mm -hmm.
Oops, I didn't even keep knocking the camera. Oops. So you'll see I've, where my hand is here. I've been putting, uh, I'm getting a bit of white paint on the on the canvas with my hand where it's been in the paint. Should use a mall stick. And I will do in a minute. Some of the hair crosses around here. Where that paint has come on on my hand, I'll just get a little cloth. And because I've already wet, wet the ground, I can just wipe that off and clean my hand at the same time. <laughs> Right. Right. So we'll use this. Get this same brush, and we'll go back into that white. I just need to clean the brush. We'll go into the the burnt umber and white colour, which is here. Just add a little bit of liquid into this. Liquid into it just to make it flow a little bit better, because I'm doing a little bit of detailed work here so we have it's not quite thin enough that brush so we use one of these this is a, a cheap Chinese brush must have cost all of a few pennies but it comes to a nice chisel point so we'll see what that's like so it doesn't matter what brush you use as long as it does the job so i need to get some nice yeah i can work with this that's better Actually, I think I'm going to have to go with even a smaller brush while we've got that light colour on there we'll just pop in this which is just picking up a bit of light Okay. Hello, Lisa Rose. Hello, Karen. Nice to see you. Oh, here. Nice for you to be with us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so I need to get a, a thinner brush. This is just a smaller watercolour brush, I think it is. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's smaller and it does the job, it doesn't matter. So we're going to get this and flatten it off, make a little bit of a chisel edge to it. And then we're just going to pop in this is where the light's just picking up on the side of the horse's leg like that oops need it Hi Karen Goodwin, another Karen. <laughs> nice to see you too. Thank you for joining us. Right, so I'm just going to put, put these into the leg. So there's a lot of sinews and muscle structure to a, a horse. You've got to pay very close attention to. You see these are quite light because what I'm going to do is just 
darken them slightly by using my finger and it blends them off like that now the little light area on this one too just where it picks up here There's a lot of sinews and structure on the legs of a horse. You have to be particularly careful to get them right. Because there's no end of experts out there who'll tell you if you've got it wrong. <laughs> right, now then. Um, I'm going to use a, an even smaller brush for this bit. So a little smaller brush. Same sort of tone. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the mall stick to do a straight line. And you hold it above the board, above your canvas. If I can do this without the. And just run it down. Like that. And that's called ruling, ruling a line. And I shall have to show you on another video how to rule with a paintbrush all sorts of very very long lines because there's not many people know how to rule with a paint with a paintbrush these days so that's another episode that I can do for you I'll do the same down this leg. So watch, I've loaded it with brick paint and then just run down like that. Okay. What's the hardest animal to paint? Uh, Karen, I don't think there is uh, a hardest animal. I think there's a different... All animals are, are equally difficult, but the hardest thing about any animal is... Uh, can be the its coat its fur fur is, is quite relatively easy to do but when you have a patterned fur like a brindle or with a horse it's called flea bit and it's covered in tiny tiny little speckles then that is very difficult you get it with a border collie um, a merle can have that type of coat uh, staffies have it staffies are bull terriers they have that type of coat which is very difficult to paint. It can be done, it just takes a little bit of time. That's all. It's all time relative. Right. There's a few little veins. That's this has a another line in the lower part of this leg. Another short one there. Okay. The ears of the horse need a bit of definition. Before I do, I've got some of this pink here. And while I've got some of that pink, it's like a pinky orange. We'll just run a little bit on the nose. That sort of blends off. And we'll get a bit darker. So we'll add a little bit of burnt umber to that. To that pink. Right. 
it so that's slowly come together right the ears of the horse need defining so I'll just clean that off these are quite dark so we'll have some burnt umber touch of ultramarine the more ultramarine you will add to the burnt umber the more blacker it will look now we don't want to go too black so you could actually put a little bit of mixing white in there it just tones it down slightly so I have the inner part of it here like that um, and while we've got some of this colour we can start to define some more of these shapes around the actual horse face, the, the nostrils and the lower lip which is always slightly darker Yep, slowly coming in together. Now, while I've got the uh, the dark brownish colour, we can just add a few of these. This is where the mane is. It's flowing over the top of the horse. You could do each hair individually and spend months and months and months on a painting doing this. And there are some amazing artists who do that. I used to do it myself, but I have, it's taken me a long time to learn the lesson. It's not necessary. It's very impressive. When you show somebody and indeed i talked about this on one of the last videos i did about rembrandt when he was in his young his early years he uh he painted every single hair when he was doing portraits of people's of people's heads their, their head of hair every single little piece of hair individual hair and it's but that was when he was about 23 something like that but you look at his paintings as he got older and no it's not because his eyes were going <laughs> when he got older he realized it wasn't necessary to paint individual hair you learn how to do it with one brush stroke and that's what being a master was all about taking the time the decades to learn those um, well what people can't really tell you when you're young you think oh, I'm gonna do it my way I want to do this I want to do every single hair and indeed I did the same right so we're getting in a little bit of that's just Get a little bit of shape around the eye. Same with the nostril. A little bit too light. Getting some shape to it now. So if anybody has any questions, 
You want to ask me? I'll do my best to answer them. I'm going to get some lighter colour now on this brush. This light brown that I had, I'm just going to lighten it up with a bit of mixing white and lead white, um, flake white alternative. Because we need this to be quite bright. Because there are a couple, in fact, we'll go into this yellowy colour, we'll make this a bright golden. Because the light's coming in onto this. And there's my, there's my phone going. I'm not going to answer it, somebody else will. <laughs> right. Just blend that off a little bit. Now, there is a slight it's picking up here. Yes, yeah, so I was saying Rembrandt, it takes a lifetime to learn how to paint. Or well, you used to learn it. It'd take a lifetime to learn how to paint hair or something like that with just one brush stroke rather than lots and lots of little brush strokes. And basically it's about being confident with the brush. Confident with a big brush, with a big bristle brush, to make that one mark like that, that would, it's a gestural stroke of the brush. And using the texture of the bristles to create the feeling of fur or hair. Now, it used to take a lifetime to learn. Not these days, you can learn all this on the internet. Wonderful stuff that it is. Uh, just a little bit of light picking up down here. They just need to be blended in a bit. It is my dream to be able to aspire to Rembrandt's technique and style. was a genius. I can remember going to, um, uh, I am, uh, I had part, I'm actually working from a, a photograph in this case, I'm not in a field painting. <laughs> so this is all made up, but I'm going off a photograph of the, the horse, but uh, the, the background and everything is made up, and it's made up in an old style. Now I was saying about when I was, went to a gallery in in Holland and I saw some originals, Rembrandt originals, and I can remember standing in front of this small oh, 10 by 12 sized self-portrait that he did when he was in his 80s. And it was incredible, the paint was so thick, it was wonderful to see. And I spent two hours just stood in front of that, watching and trying to, looking closely and trying to learn what he did, how he did it. Uh, well, let's add a little bit of that blue to that. It's got a little bit of a coolness to it. These are ears here. It's the same with this. The darker areas on the on the horse that it's a bit cooler. So we'll just add a bit of ultramarine to that brown. Back in the old days, of course, in order to learn how to paint, 
he became an apprentice to an artist. And uh, fortunately, you can't do that anymore. If you could, I would have done that. When I was at college, I would have loved to have done that. Instead, when I was at college, I did graphic design and illustration. Instead of doing fine art, I should have done fine art. You see, what illustration did for me, learning to be an illustrator, was it taught me how to draw, certainly. But it didn't teach me how to paint. I'm completely self-taught. I've had to teach myself all the details. Yeah. Well, you did that with Titian's Ascension, Marina. <laughs> you stood transfixed, yes. Certain, some art can do that. I think I... I have seen some Titians. I can't remember if I've seen the, the original of the Ascension. But that would be another one I, I too would be transfixed because he was another one of my heroes. As was Poussin. I've always loved the old masters. How they painted. The techniques. I spent years studying the techniques. Reading. Making my own paints. Making my own mediums. Secret recipes. Some of them I just rediscovered. They're not so secret now. I think um, everything's on the internet. Oh, it's getting there now. Titian's ascension is enormous. I have no doubt it is. Most of his paintings were. They did paint rather large in those days. <laughs> Same with Poussin as well. But uh, Titian's one of my favourite. I think I've seen um, the, the Hunter, is it? Uh, and I was explaining to someone the other day that a lot of that, if you look closely, because it was done in his later years, Titian actually painted with his fingers. And his eyesight was going. And he used his fingers a lot. And he did a fantastic job. Which is why I'm showing you now how you can blend with your fingers. It's just another painting tool. That's all it is, your finger. Painting tool. Now the inside of this belly is a bit more brown. Burnt on there. So this is just one more layer on this painting, as I explained. Um, I could go on and do several more layers once this is dried. In fact, I may do that for next week, show you how this is developing. Do a little bit more to it each time. Um, so, um, just for those people who've joined, uh, I, my name is John Silver. I'm a professional artist, and uh, I've been a professional for many decades now. Um, I'm mainly known for painting dogs. I'm known in the canine world, and I do commissions. People I've done commissions for British royalty, uh, celebrities. It's all good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So we'll get this small brush now and just do a little bit of the detail on the eye because there's a little bit of highlight on that eye. Which just shows the Oh, sorry, my phone's making noises. Uh, yes, Pat, we've known each other for a long time. 1994, I think we first met. Hi, Edward the Rose. Thank you for joining us. Um, right, I'm just going to pull up a little bit of a highlight on one of the ears. Because obviously the light will be catching. There. And there. And a bit of a bounce to light. And there. We'll get some more of that dark now because that shape of that eye has gone all funny so we'll get some of the ultramarine and burnt umber to create a dark tone Okay, so I think we'll use the bristle brush again. This tone here just needs to be a little bit smoother, softer. Same with this tone here. Need to go a little bit cooler with that, so we'll add a little bit more of the ultramarine. You see, how am I playing? these tones almost as glazes because they're so thin so that by the next layer when I put another layer of glaze on it'll add that extra depth of colour and uh, would be a lot more interesting as well No, we're coming there. We are getting the getting there now, I think, with the uh with the basic tone of the horse. So once I can uh, let this dry, I'll leave it another a week or so like that. I could leave it overnight, it will be dry overnight. But if I leave it till next week I can do a little bit more to it for you.
Okay. Next time I'll have to turn off my notifications sounds <laughs> on my phone. Sorry about this, folks. I'm still new to this game. That's all I want to do to the horse for now. Um, and there we are. I'll tell you what, while we've got 10 minutes, I'm going to use the same little round brush. It doesn't have a point to it anymore, it's all over the place. As you can see, is it picking up? Well, it's not very, not very pointed. It's an old watercolour brush or something. It's a daily brownie sapphire. Oh, you probably know what that is, rather than myself. <laughs> brush is a brush to me, if I just use it for the shape. Right, so, I'm going to get some of the burnt umber. Pure burnt umber and liquid. Just to make it flow. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, uh, cadmium yellow to it. And then a touch of cadmium red. Oh, it's probably a bit too much red. So we'll add a bit more yellow, and a touch more brown, and a bit more liquid, and thin it out. Now, so you could do this with yellow ochre and burnt umber. Just going to put some some leaves in here. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll just lighten that up a touch with a bit of a bit of white. Because on the edges of the leaves are going to be a bit lighter. This is where the old masters painted trees like uh, Gainsborough Wood or Poussin, Titian. Maybe not so Titian. Maybe not, not so much Titian, but uh, certainly the other old masters. Still not quite right. I need to make this more liquid. Because it's got liquid in it will dry quite quickly and bind. You must put a binder in with your paint if you're thinning it down. Otherwise, if you come to varnish it or paint over it, it'll just take that layer off. So can you see what it's doing to those uh, to the leaves now? It's making it look a little bit more old-fashioned. We'll do the same with these here. I think there was it was probably um, classed as a style. Of landscape painting back then because it seems like everybody used to do trees and leaves like this. Some of them had a bit more green in. And some were just ordinary brown brown and uh, See, a lot of the time, the, the old paintings, they looked very dark and earthy. Because those were the cheapest colours they could buy back then. Earth colours were much, much cheaper than the bright, brighter colours, the primaries. We'll just make that a little bit darker behind this ear. You can use artistic license. If something needs to be thrown out, 
make it a little bit darker behind it. And conversely, if it's very dark, then you want to put some slightly lighter behind it to throw it out, to make it stand out more. So, now then, I uh, just need to get a, this is a little watercolour brush as well, but I, I like the way this splays at the end, so I just need to wet it, moisten it, dry it, and then what I'm going to do is get some burnt umber and liquid original. And we're just going to get quite dark with this. Whoops, a daisy. Just need to take that off there. And create some light, light and shade, some darker areas. Again, it throws that horse out, so I just just need to be a bit more. But then that will throw that leg out. You see. I don't know how well the colour is actually coming out. Hello Nico, hello Anita, thank you for joining us. See how using this brush like this, just splay the bristles out. Can make it look like lots and lots of little leaves. You don't do this too much. So, now I'm going to get another a rigger brush, uh, I'll use this one, this is a, a rigger brush, and we'll come to a point when it's wet, wetted, wettened, <laughs> so I'm just going to get some of this burnt umber that I've picked up, perhaps just a bit of mixing white, just to soften the harshness, don't want it too, too dark. And we're just going to pop in some. Branches and twigs. It starts to look a bit tree like as soon as you do that. There you go. Now to create another another way you can create an illusion. Of trees and sky and stuff is um, well you've got the big broad expanse of dark area of tree you can actually mix some sky color up so we'll use the whites mixing white with a bit of ultramarine just a little bit uh, might need to place a little bit of brown into that. 
like that. Just to warm it slightly. And then just pop one or two of these little things in like this. And these can then look like the, the light is shining through the leaves. It's a reverse way of painting um, leaves. Normally the way to paint is from the back to the front. So you start off with the sky. And then you have the far distance. Then you have the middle ground. Then the foreground. Then your subject matter. And then perhaps foliage in front of that. All those layers. So you'd obviously do the sky. And then you would do the trees over the top. But this way. You, well I've done that with this. But you can also augment it. By putting a few dots of light in. And you make them random. Don't make them of any pattern. Because nature does not have a specific regular pattern in, in the sky. In leaves, yes, a particular singular leaf has a pattern. But a whole bunch of them don't. They have a basic shape, as in the shape of a tree is very very similar to the shape of the actual leaf of the tree so there we go okay so we'll leave that for now we'll let that one layer dry and we'll come back to that again next week so <clears throat> thank you everybody for watching um if anybody has any questions uh do feel free to to ask them i shall try and answer them to the best of my ability uh, if not on here then later on within the text so thank you gary thank you pat for watching thank you everybody for watching thank you marina thank you karen thank you both karens there's two karens tonight and uh, I hope to see you next time. I think I'll probably do this again next Monday. We'll go ahead with the second part of this painting. Well, it's going to be the third part. Which will be another layer of paint. Uh, on the horse, the trees, the foreground. The background is more or less finished. We don't need to do anything to that now. So, I hope you've enjoyed tonight. We've been doing a horse. My name has been John Silver. Uh, if you're interested in any of my paintings or whatever have a look on my facebook there's links to my websites and my ebay auctions i have an ebay auction every week ending on a sunday night uk time so it's been lovely seeing you <laughs> or even though i can't see you do come again next week okay bye <laughs>